Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Lavella, and we are continuing our Let's Play from Phantom SMP. In the last episode, I kind of gave you a beginner part of the tours, part one of the tour of my base. There's not a whole lot left of it, really, so we should be able to wrap this up in this episode. Um, we were trying to go up top, and I got distracted with all the different levels. And as you saw in the last, yeah, I didn't mean to go out there. As you saw in the last episode, I have level one is the storage, level two will be sheep. I have decided that that was a pretty good idea. Level three is the nether wart, and you can see we have quite a bit of space. So I'm probably going to have at least one more, eh, it looks like we have room for two more levels. Before we get too close to um, the over the above ground, so yeah, it's gonna be all that under there is gonna be you know used up. So anyway, <coughs> hmm, well we may not because it's not very wide. That may be as far as we go. Anyway, uh, I told you in the last episode I live in a jungle and it's kind of hard to believe me because. Um, it's gone <laughs> not as much as I would like I'm clearing it out as I go um, and for the record I've only been on this server um six weeks maybe a month my days melt into each other it's really I have a terrible time keeping track of time I could look it up on the whitelist on the discord server uh, channel on discord channel and see what my um join date was but I want I'm guessing no more than two months maybe anyway so uh this was a jungle it is a jungle biome but I'm clearing it out because I'm going to build a village and not a typical Minecraft village but uh my son and I my grown son, he's 26, he, um, he and I get together and once in a while when our schedules work, and we play a game online called Star Wars Galaxies. Back in the old days, it was owned by Sony, and you had to pay for an account and all that good stuff. Over the years, in my opinion, Sony ruined the game because they listened to the whiners, and they forgot about the quality of the game. That's my opinion. Uh, anyway, the game got run into the ground and they relinquished it. And so basically, uh, people can get the files and they can set up their own servers and blah, blah, blah. So my son and I play on a server. And if you know anything about Star Wars, the original Star Wars, uh, the Ewoks, they have, they live in trees. Well, forever, I have always wanted to make a tree village. You know, with, with, you know, where you've got the little tree houses in the tops of the jungle trees, and you've got the rope bridges that go across, and you have the watchtowers up there, kind of like a Robin Hood kind of thing going on, you know. But uh, a few months ago, my son and I were playing Star Wars Galaxies, and I, my brain kicked in, and I was like, this is what I want right here and I was at the Ewok village in the game so it inspired me this is not going to be an exact replica this is Ewok village inspired okay I want that to be clear because if somebody actually watches this and they know anything about it I don't want them going in and going oh well that doesn't look like an Ewok hut because an Ewok hut blah 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 or the trees look blah 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 okay it's inspired by Ewok villages, okay? It's not going to be an exact replica. So basically, one day I was trying to make a hut. And the one in the game basically looks like if you took a boiled egg and you sat it on the flat end, that's the shape of the Ewok huts in the game. And as we all know, anyone who's tried to make circles or spheres or globes or whatever, 
in Minecraft. <laughs> it's a bit on the challenging side, even for somebody with some experience at building. And I was getting really frustrated. Well, Phantom, I mentioned him in the last episode. This is his server. His name is Phantom Lim 520 He has a Twitch channel. He's an amazing streamer. Very friendly, very relaxed, great sense of humor, great guy. He's also a wonderful builder. And uh, so I was out here getting frustrated, and he got on, and I said, listen, I need to borrow your eyeballs. And uh, so he came out, and I showed him what I was trying to do, and I was like, the shape is not right. It's too fat. It needs to be more, you know, oblong, more like an egg. And he came out here, and he built this. Now, the cobble was not here. That's what I was using to measure. So it detracts from the shape. But you can see, and then of course the leaves, but uh, built by Phantom Limb 520, established April 26th, 21. So, I obviously helped with the interior a little bit, but uh, I need to get some string in there so that won't be spreading. But anyway, uh, this is the little hut he built. And uh, he added the chimney and stuff, and it was so cute. And it was perfect. It's exactly what I was trying to do. It was exactly what I was trying to do. And if you're a builder in Minecraft, or maybe you're not great at building, but you have great ideas for building, and you struggle with trying to get that picture in your head to become a reality in Minecraft, you are not alone. Uh, like I said, I've played for a long time, and I still have that problem. And that was my struggle that day as well. And he just came in and just started putting down blocks. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. And I basically had a stair step of dirt over here. And I just sat there and watched him. And, uh, and at one point I was like, well, it's too short. It needs to be taller. And he's like, okay. So he adjusted it. And we went back and forth and he got it. And it was absolutely exactly what I wanted. So that is the model for all of the other huts. Now, that being said, this one stands alone and it's going to remain standing alone because I want it to be special because to me it is special. It's sentimental to me because a friend built it and it's going to stand alone. I want it to be the sole focus of just the hut. This, however, in the, um, in the game, rendering of the Ewok village they have these massive trees that go way up and the branches are pretty sparse the leaves are pretty sparse until you get to the very tip top and um, but the trunks are pretty straight and at the front of them they have a hut and then they have a ramp which in Minecraft I would say it's probably going to be about two or three wide and it has railings on each side and it slopes up kind of like um like a ramp you would see at a public building for wheelchair access and it has this ramp that goes all the way up and spirals around the tree trunk and then up in the tree randomly there are other huts uh sitting you know by the ramp and uh, then of course they have the bridges that connect them so this is basically my layout this is uh i came in one day and i was like okay i want to get this all laid out so i took the cobble and i measured his hut so i could duplicate it and i marked off the space i would need for the base and so each tree these are all going to be trees now the size of the tree may change I really don't want them to be too fat. I want uh, I want there to be room for other things. I don't want it to be that dense. So this may get shifted a little bit. We'll see as we build. But um, so basically what you see is you see the rings. That's going to be a tree. It's going to be a huge, huge, huge tree with the ramp going all the way up. And, you'll, and the cobble marks out the place for the huts. And so basically, 
what I have done over here is, um, and the, the pods all is from farming spruce, as you can see, it's going to take a lot of spruce. I'm using spruce logs. I was going to use the jungle, but the spruce really looks more like the texture in the game of the tree. So I'm going to go with spruce. And it's an e easy harvest anyway. I just... You can either chop a staircase up into the top of the spruce tree and chop your way down, or you can ender pearl to the top. If you have a light tree, you can fly to the top, chop your way down. Um, I use ladders a lot of times if I'm going to be doing... Now, if I just need one tree or two trees, I'm not going to bother with any of it. I'll just spiral up. But uh, if I'm doing a serious harvest of spruce, I'll just grab a stack of ladders, and I'll put ladders along the tree, and when I get to the top, I just chop it all down, collect my ladders, and move on to the next one. But anyway, um, these huts that I have started is basically just the dimensions. It's not shaped. So it's like um, a sculptor gets a block of stone or whatever their, their um, choice is. I, I can't remember the right term. Uh, but anyway, whether it's stone or clay or whatever. Start out with a block. And then they chip away at it. Well, that's basically what this is. Is This is here to be chipped at. Uh, to have blocks taken out and replaced with stairs. And blocks taken out and replaced with slabs. And all of that until the shape is in place. And I was working on this one as well. And then in between, there's going to be like little crop farms. And maybe a chicken coop. And it has to be ocelot free because the ocelots keep killing all my chickens I can't keep chickens they even spawned I finally in my basement I I probably had mm, probably a half dozen chickens or more it wasn't an excessive amount and I thought okay my chickens will be safe down here but no the ocelots spawned on the grass blocks down in the storage room and they murdered all my chickens again so anyway I'm not a fan of ocelots. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to have like a little chicken coop and probably have a stable and, you know, different things like that. And um, when I say village, I don't necessarily, I don't know if I'm going to put villagers in here yet or not. I think, see, they just did it. They just killed that chick, that baby chick. There's not even drops to pick up. Anyway, uh, I will probably have the majority of my villagers safe underground, the ones that I'm going to keep for trading and stuff, but what I will probably do is have this as spawn proof as possible for aggro. I'll have the lighting to a level that uh, the you know creepers and skellies and zombies won't be spawning around it or spawning close enough to track to it because zombies have quite a distance for their AI um, I have been working out here at night before because there were other people on the server and not everybody could sleep and uh, they have tracked me from I'm like where did you come from I have torches everywhere where did you come from they can track for a long distance so uh, I'll, I may put up some kind of a wall or something I don't know but I will probably end up uh, having some villagers here just to run around and give it life uh, so it looks like it's actually part of a world but uh, I keep overusing the word probably because nothing is written in stone whenever I am building whether I'm creating or planning or whatever I can be in the middle of a build and have a brain fart or an inspiration or an epiphany or whatever you want to call it and all of a sudden my focus changes. So I'm not making any promises. These are the plans as of now. And um, these out here are basically put there so that they'll be more like a watchtower. And my goal my goal is <laughs> these pandas. I love the pandas so much. Is to have some kind of a harbor out here 
where ships can come in and I'm going to have to get help with the ships because I have, I don't think I've, I think I've built like a little boat once before, but I don't think I've ever attempted to build an actual ship. But anyway, I'll find an area that has, um, or I'll build it up. Maybe that area right over here, actually, that would probably be pretty good. Because that land is connected. My biggest fear for the villagers are the drowned, because the drowned will come up. But I'll, if I, you know, I will probably do the villagers, but I'll probably also have a, like an army of golems so that they can protect them. But if they die, it won't be a huge thing because I will have enough villagers to rebreed them. So they won't be what I consider valuable for trade or economy or profit or anything. Okay, this will probably be the best spot. But my plan is to have like a smuggler's cave, like terraform this with rock and vines and maybe a waterfall and um, where it's, you know, it's not completely disguised, but you know, have some terrain around here, take all this sand out, make it more rock and dirt, and then have an opening where basically the lore would be that, you know, there you've got your harbor over there that has the legitimate trade and then you have, you know, pirates or whoever that might come in and they'll sneak into the smuggler's cave and bring in black market goods. Blackberry wine or something, I don't know. But anyway, the, a cave, you know, that has an underground that's got, you know, like the dripping and has the vines and the mossy cobble and all of that kind of stuff. So that's my plan for this part. And then also, this is a lot of talking and no doing. I promise we will get to building and stuff at some point. Um, basically, this is the prequel of the book to set you up for, you know, what will come. It'll make sense later. But anyway, um, in the game, not only was there an Ewok tree village, but there was also an Ewok lake village. And it was... Um, obviously in the water so I'm thinking this area over here is uh, well, it's still pretty deep but it's doable but we could do the um, lake village like over here so it's in sight of the tree village and, you know, they wouldn't need a ship to get from one to the other. They could just hop in a boat and head over. So, um, I think this would be a good location for the lake, the Ewok-inspired lake village. So, yeah. And basically, the shapes of the huts, um, the texture will be birch. The game... The whole thing is a very light wood, so basically the entire build is going to be out of birch. It'll be birch planks, it'll be stripped birch logs, it'll be birch trap doors, it'll be birch, 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 birch. But it'll look good. If you don't like birch, you're not going to want to watch it, but I think it's going to be awesome. So, and I'm not a hater of birch. The only blocks in, in Minecraft that I really despise. The first one that comes to mind is mycelium. Um, I used to have a problem with purper. I don't despise purper anymore. I have seen it used in some builds that I was actually pretty impressed with. So I at least acknowledge the fact that purper can be useful. Um, the other one would be granite. Uh, I feel like granite by itself, not one of the best blocks to look at. However, when you mix it with, uh, regular terracotta and like the red clay bricks and, um, other terracotta, <laughs> uh, 
it actually looks pretty good. So granite can be useful in a build, in my opinion. Um, I wouldn't build a house with it, personally, but uh, it's no longer on my I despise this block list. It used to be. Purper and um, granite both used to be. Right now, uh, mycelium is pretty much the only one that I am absolutely against. I feel like it's a wasted block. Uh, people say, oh, well, you can grow mushrooms on it. You can grow mushrooms elsewhere. You don't need mycelium for mushrooms. And you could grow the mushroom trees on other blocks. You don't need mycelium for that either. Um, I just, I don't get it. And I have never known for sure if, uh, like in a mushroom biome, and yes, I said mushroom biome, you know, the biome that has the mushroom cows, uh, I don't know if the mycelium blocks are linked to the mushroom cows spawning. Because if you know anything about a mushroom biome, the uh, only thing that will naturally spawn in that biome are the mushroom cows. Now, of course, phantoms will come from the sky and eat your face if you haven't slept. And you can have spawners underground. But as far as like a mob, aggro or otherwise, they won't spawn in a uh, mushroom biome. This is my nether portal, uh, my nether tunnel. And I've done, I followed the theme of my basement with the wood. And um, this is the start of another base. And I have to rethink it a little bit because uh, this is someone else's tunnel. So I haven't quite decided. I think I'm going to go around and just kind of have it wrap around my tunnel. Um, but uh, I love to build in the nether, but I hate the mobs. So I get these great ideas. I want to build a base in the nether. I want to have a magnificent build in the nether. And I go and I'm all excited and I'm, my creative juices are just going crazy and I'm in the zone and then I spend all my time fighting ghasts and fighting skellies and you know fighting blaze and fighting magma cubes and I'm just like you know what not worth it I'm going back to the overworld so <laughs> this time I'm hoping that I could stick it out and get a base built and if I have to I'll put a really really high ceiling of glass so that I can, you know, see out without being bombarded from the sky. So, I don't know. We're, but that's just... I came in one day and I have all these projects that I want to work on. And I came in one day and I was like, I'm not in the mood to work on any of it. So, you know what? I think I'll work in the nether. So, anyway, my plan is to have an entrance here and then that entrance down there. And have the base wrap around the outside of this tunnel. This is one of our main tunnels. I believe I'm in the west tunnel. I'm in the green tunnel. Okay. I think it's west. Pretty sure it's west. Uh, if I take, well, we'll take, oh, I don't have anything. We'll take the, take it with us, but we'll walk it this time. Anyway. It extends out, but this is as far as the decorations have gone. And it wasn't even this far, but Phantom and um, uh, Eskimo Diamond and myself and other people from the community have uh, helped him expand. He's, he, he's been working on these tunnels on stream. But anyway, he brought this tunnel out specifically to get, because that's, that's Eskimo's portal and this is mine. It's her base that I'm connected to with the um, rails, the railway. So anyway, this is um, my tunnel. And if you want a really good story or you want a really good tour of the world, or at least the main part of the world, then check out Phantom Lim 520 on Twitch and you can look at his old videos because he shows them off all the time. 
Oh, I'm not ready for this to be over. Dismiss. Uh, these balloons, that leads you to the portal of the gaming district. And off of that is an offshoot tunnel that leads to a build that um, a few of the community members are working on to build Winterfell. It's going to be amazing. They've already made great progress. And it's a lot of work. And the people that are working on it have it. They don't have, they can't just be on Minecraft 24-7. So it's a process. It takes time. And this is the side tunnel for Devious Decoy. And he, when I first met him, Phantom and I went to go see his base. And he said, and he's, it was already known to us that he loves redstone, that he's good at redstone. And he said, I'm not much of a builder, but here's my base. And we went into his base. It's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, right. You're not much of a builder. Yeah, that's funny. And every time he builds something, it just, it looks wonderful. It's just, I love his style. So anyway, um, let's go down here. I will at least get you to the hub. And then we'll wrap this up and we'll pick it up <coughs> the next episode. I want to give you an overview of the server so you kind of have an idea of what environment I'm in. <coughs> Excuse me. And I haven't even gotten into the community. The community, so friendly, so welcoming, very mature. And there are no plugins for playing bots. Playing on a Java server, most a lot of the Java servers are whitelisted. Are, are open, I mean. They're not whitelisted. And you can just join. And you can just start building. You can just go wherever. And of course you're supposed to read the rules. And if you break the rules and you get caught breaking the rules. Then the staff can ban you. And all roll back everything and blah blah blah. Well they don't have that here. This is trust. This is why it's whitelisted. You join the Discord server. You join Phantom's Discord server. And after you've been in there. In that community. Long enough for he and the mods to get to know you not just going in and spamming a bunch of crap but you have to get to level five in the discord server or channel and once you've gotten to once you reach that point that gives him enough time to get an idea of what kind of person you are whether you're going to be a positive member of the community whether you're going to be toxic whether you're you know too young to be part of the community whether you know whatever because it is 16 and over. So, the thing is, uh, you can't just, you know, sign up and jump on. This is not an open server. And he does that for our protection. If you are wanting to get on the server and you're having to wait, it can be a little frustrating. Because, especially if you're used to being able to just jump on any server you want, any time you want. But the reality is, he does that to protect the, the community. Because if he wasn't being careful, if he wasn't screening people, and just anybody could come on, I mean, they could come on and trash this place in five minutes. And all this work and all these materials would be gone. So, because there is no trust. I mean, I can break any block I want to in this world. I have the physical ability to do that. So... There's a reason there's a waiting period. There's a reason he wants to get to know people first. But anyway, this design, I believe, I know John, he said that John designed the tunnels. And I believe it might have been Volker and John that designed the hub. I could be mistaken. But anyway, uh, this was all designed by the community, and I'm sure Phantom put in his two cents too. But, um, yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. They did a fantastic job. And um, the, we have, there's eight tunnels. There's one for each cardinal direction, north, south, east, and west. And then, of course, you have the, the offshoots here. But anyway, um, I'm going to stop there. As you heard, my timer went off. And um, 
Okay, I have to pick those up. I don't want the magma cream. I don't need the magma cream. But I can't stand it when <laughs> the blocks are just floating on the ground going to waste. And yes, I have wasted blocks before when my pockets were full. And going back to dump my inventory was a huge chore. Yes, I have done it from time to time. But it, I don't make a habit of it. 99% of the time, I make sure I pick everything up. And Devious has joined the game. So anyway, I'm going to get off here and wrap this up. And again, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. Your time is valuable. It doesn't matter if you're a kid. It doesn't matter if you're an old fart. It doesn't matter if you're a young adult. It doesn't matter who you are, what your race, what your, your, your gender, your age. None of that matters. You are a human being. Your time is valuable. It's that simple. So, you shared it with me, and I'm thankful. Thank you again, and we will see you later.